This is Barnstable today for Friday, January 9th. Welcome aboard. I'm Mark Mumford. And please keep in mind that the meetings we cover are available on demand at the town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. The first town council meeting of 2009 is our focus today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. Bob Jones, chair of the Coastal Resources Committee, was on hand to update the council on the committee's first eight months said before you know some of the stuff in the Camp Dresser McGee plan has been implemented and not necessarily by design but the, the fact that you know over 20 years here that uh, you know we've decided to move forward and, and uh, correct our, our uh, you know pollution problems and things like that back in 1989 when they did or 1990 when they did the have a management plan one of the things they said that there was not enough data for them to evaluate the water quality of this town 20 years ago. Right now, we have more data than you'd ever believe from the Mass Estuaries you know, Act and the stuff that the town has done of Dale Sad and Lindsay Council and all of the other groups. We've got a lot of data to do and, and you really don't have to read it because all you've got to do to find out you know, what the quality of our water is, go down to the beach and, the, and look at the algaes growing on the the uh, uh, the shoreline so all that scientific data and you know to me any any number less than zero and it goes into parts per million my eyes gloss over I'm done so I'm not going to go in and necessarily try to understand what Dale Sad understands I'm just going to take Dale Sad's word and right now that uh, the way the way we are on our waterfront now, it's not the Wild West. The, the Harbor Master, as I said, has developed mooring regulations. And the Conservation Commission has a comp comprehensive and defendable uh, dock plans. Later, the council was informed about a storm brewing at the under construction Hyannis Youth and Community Center. However, the news was coming from the town's community services director, Lynn Poyant, who made it very clear that in this case, it's a fair weather storm. We are here once again to talk about the Hyannis Youth and Community Center. Uh, last month when we were here, we had, uh, you had accepted a grant on our behalf for the upcoming season that we'll be experiencing at the, when we open the Youth and Community Center in September of 2009. At that time, I, I reminded you that in uh, September of 2008, we hired David Lacouture as our marketing manager. His duties include recruiting and attracting opportunities in the facility that promote revenue and facilitate growth and development within the center. And one such opportunity is bringing a high-level hockey franchise that would attract professional hockey players and provide a, a competitive, affordable hockey experience for our community. Um, the Eastern Professional Hockey League is a relatively new league. It's been around for about two years. The, it, the area that it covers is from Ohio and Maryland up to New Hampshire. The commissioner is Jim Riggs, who was the founder of the East Co Eastern Coast Hockey League and is a lifelong, li lifelong hockey executive. They currently have teams in New York. There are two teams there, one team in Connecticut, one team in New Jersey, and they're looking to expand the league to have about eight teams within the next year. They're looking for a team in Massachusetts, another team in New Hampshire, and a team in uh, Rome, New York. Um, the proposed Hyannis Storm franchise uh, would have, has a private majority owner by the name of David T. Adams of Melbourne, Florida. Mr. Adams um, actually has ties to Cape Cod. In the 70s, he was a coach of both Falmouth and uh, Sandwich High School hockey teams. So he's very familiar with the Cape. With regards to the benefits to the Hyannis area, um, to the Hyannis Youth and Community Center, um, practice would be five days a week during its seven-month season, which is from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. School is in session during that time, and it's actually a time that is very um, low as far as use of uh, rental of ice space. And a reminder that we have two sheets of ice uh, that we have available for sale. Um, games would be played on opposite nights as the local high school programs. They have a 50-game season with 25 home games. Um, home games that also take place for the Hyena Storm on Friday, Saturday nights, and possibly Sunday afternoons. But again, it would be based upon accommodating the school schedules. 
They would fill a four-hour block to accommodate both, both pre- and post-game setup, so the rental time would be covering that time. Uh, they're seeking to incorporate halftime youth activities, which would be, you know, stick boy and girl nights and, and different activities like that. Um, the income from the rental of ice time, both the practiced ice time, which is 10 hours a week, and the game time is four hours per week. They'd be leasing a, an office and locker room space, and it would be an annual lease, something that would be sub subject to negotiation. The town would incur no financial costs whatsoever. However, it has a potential benefit of income of $100,000 a year. Town Councilor Hank Farnham was enthusiastic about the potential for the Hyena Storm, but he wanted information on ticket prices. Thanks. Uh, I think this is a nifty idea. My wife and I were seasoned ticket holders of the Cape Cod Cubs and the Cape Cotters. Uh, we Cape Cod Freedoms and the Cape Cod Buccaneers. We spent a lot of time down yeah. there in, at the old uh, uh, rink. What, what, uh, what kind of a level is, is this? I'm not familiar with this particular this league, in, in number one or number two. What, what are we talking about for ticket prices? Do you have any sense yet? They we're talking about an adult ticket price of about ten dollars and children eight um, eight dollars and under. But I think that that's still up for negotiation. Part of it is set by the league, I believe, uh, as far as the rates are concerned, and they do want it to be family friendly. This is basically a feeder league. Um, if you if you think about baseball being triple A, double A, A, this would probably be the equivalent of an A. Double A. Barnstable Recreation Director David Curley adding to the Highness Storm presentation reported last night that youth hockey here in town is booming. The economy and, and uh, the uh, decline in enrollment, you would think that the numbers would be down. They are not down. Uh, the numbers uh, for the boys program has increased. Uh, the girls hockey is taking off. I mean, it's, it's tremendous. Uh, we, we saw the varsity program uh, capture a state championship not too many years ago. Uh, we uh, now have a JV girls hockey program uh, at the Kennedy Rink and there's talk of future teams uh, there as well. Um, I won't be specific as far as um, gross revenue numbers with respect to this user group, but um, I would say um, um, we have a commitment from the Barnes Youth Hockey to, um, to increase uh, the dollar amount to us five times. I mean, that's a tremendous amount um, of ice time that they're requesting <coughs> through us uh, today. Uh, certainly, we're looking to go year-round. We have two sheets of ice at Kennedy. Uh, they'll be using less ice in other facilities, whether it be Bourne, Tony Kent. Uh, the, but they're demanding more ice time um, to make it um, much more attractive as a program, which I think um, why the, why the uh, youth hockey program is taking it off, because they're going to be um, at Kennedy more often. Uh, and so it's, it's extremely nice to hear and nice to see that those numbers are increasing, uh, again, given this climate and, uh, and given the enrollment. So that's a very nice thing uh, to happen, and I think only uh, with programs like uh, possibly bringing the semi-pro team here, uh, that will stimulate the growth as well. So um, we, we're uh, in those uh, types of programs, uh, we're, we're doing quite well. There was a lot of additional action at last night's town council session, and if you'd like to see more, you can catch it on demand at the town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. As far as the meeting schedule is concerned, an empty slate tonight. However, at 5.30 Monday evening, it's land acquisition and preservation in the Selectman's Conference Room. Then at 7 o'clock, it's the planning board meeting in the hearing room. And Monday's meeting schedule wraps up at 7.30 with the Sandy Neck Board over at the MEA Conference Room off Finney's Lane. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here on Monday. I'm Mark Mumford.